for excellence and equity for all learners. So once we had kind of gotten that program running for a while, we kept having people say, well, can't we get access to it even if we can't come do the doctoral program? And so in response to, to many requests, we designed CAIL, um, Certificate in Advanced Education Leadership. And the idea is, it's not exactly like the doctoral program at all, but it builds off of some of the content, some of the curriculum, some of the pedagogy that we use in that. And what we're really trying to do with, with CAIL is have amazing online learning experience for you. I mean, we've all been a lot more online in the last year and a half than we ever thought we'd be. We designed KL ahead of that. Um, and make it a, an experience that you're getting exposure to the best research and practice we can get you access to while you have some really practical ways to apply it. So what we wanna do is help you do whatever you're trying to do um, a little bit better. So this is kind of how it looks like, Neil, and if you can put it on the next slide. Um, we are, the audience is system level leaders. Either you're already in a role that you would think of as a system, or you're in a role, maybe you're a teacher leader, or a principal, an assistant principal, a coach, and you're thinking kind of bigger. Like, I like what I'm doing in my sphere of influence, and I would like to have wider influence in some way. Um, so that's that's kind of how we think about who it's for. We we developed five modules. They're each 12 weeks long. You can just pick one module. Like I'm really interested in driving change. I'm really interested in leading for excellence and equity. Um, you can just do one. Or if you want to, and you'll get a certificate for that one, like leading learning certificate. Or you can do four of the five over the course of a couple of years, and you can. Um, you can get the entire kale certificate. So totally up to you. If you wanna do the whole one, as it says, you need to do leading learning because I feel really strongly that if you're gonna lead in education, it's grounded in learning. So we require the leading learning module if you're doing, if you wanna do the full certificate and then you choose what the other three are out of our four. Um, so you can see overall objectives. We want you to really understand why it's so hard to move systems. What are the complexities there? And then how do you budge systems? What are the different ways that you can um, create transformational change? Very recently, we just this past year, we were able to add a degree credit option. We got lots of requests over the years to have a degree credit option. Harvard didn't really do that, but we did a lot of work um, on that. And so you can, if it's relevant in your context, um, get 60 clock hours per module, if that's relevant for you. You can also enroll in the graduate credit option um, and that will get you to HGST credits. You don't have to enroll in the graduate credit option. That's totally a little bit extra, a little bit extra work, a little bit extra on top. Um, you can just do the, the non-credit option. And I already talked about that. So let's go on to the next slide. All right, so here are the modules. We've, we're offering four this fall. Um, the term, as you can see, goes September 13th to December 5, 12 weeks. We've got driving change, leading for excellence and equity, leading learning and managing evidence. We have one more module um, that's not listed here, developing myself. And we probably will offer that in the spring term. We definitely will offer it in the summer term. So. There, there's three different times of year you can that we usually run the modules, and there's usually four in the fall and winter, and then there's usually two in the summer. So if you want to just keep going with the KO modules, you can do them kind of right in a row, or you can do one in the fall, maybe one in the summer. You kind of you know figure out your own pathway through if you decide you want to do more than one module. And most of them, it's pretty self-explanatory what they're about. And you can look online at um, a little more detailed information. Um, the, the driving change is really about how do you, what are the different ways to think about change, um, leading for excellence and equity, grounded in racial equity with recognition that um, many of you are in contexts where you might not think about race as one of the prime factors that differentiates what kind of education kids get access to. Here in the US, it is a prime factor. Um, and so we didn't want to have a module that said, it doesn't matter which kind of diversity you're talking about or which kind of identity-based marker. We wanted to say it does matter in many contexts. But in some contexts, it might be more about 
skin color. It might be more about religion. It might be more about gender. So that module is meant to be inclusive um, by saying in your context, what are the various identity markers, the different ways that sometimes um, systems can oppress rather than encourage um, students to thrive? And then what do you do about that? How, how, do you, how do you actually make systems deliver on the amazing potential of the learners who come? Um, and then leading learning, as Dylan said, this is the one I'm the faculty chair. We have different faculty chairs for each uh, module. And you do really fun things in that one, like what, what is the importance of task and how do you actually make sure you see well in classrooms and how do you have productive meetings and how do you support adult learning and how do you think about um, what learning in the future could look like. And then managing evidence is, is about how do you how do you as a leader sort of differentiate what kinds of evidence always incomplete always have to be transferred to your own context what do you do with that and then developing myself is grounded in a um a really unique part of the egld program and is all about we, we in the egld program have a mantra you transform self transform sector so if i want to have big, i want to make big change i have to look inward first and the developing myself module is about that so that's just a little a little rundown, but you can find out more about them online. All right, can I get that next slide, Dylan? Thank you. One thing that we're really aware of is that the world is quite chaotic right now. And I, for one, was hoping that August 2021, going into the new school year here in the US, would be much calmer, <laughs> even without the vaccine for my own children, as well as all the other children under 12. Um, it's not. Right, it's just not. It's it's. There's more uncertainty. The Delta variant um, is crazy. Many parts of the world don't have the same access to the vaccines that we have here in the U.S. We have people in the U.S. who have access and aren't aren't taking the vaccine. It's just there's a lot of craziness. Not to mention all of the other um, turmoil in the world. So, just like why would you do this? All right. And so the way we think about that is um, equity which has come to the forefront of many people's awareness of um, how learning and school plays out for, for children and families and communities um, is grounded as a core value in all of our modules. So they're all about how do you help every child learn and they attack that from different ways. And so um, we think that the CALE modules could give you really practical. I feel like a lot of the conversation about equity has been heartfelt, but not translated into action. And so what does it look like to translate that into action? Um, another reason we think CALE could be helpful right now is there's there is so much disruption and uncertainty. How do you figure out what to do, right? You keep trying, like, you keep trying different things. And Kale gives you a community of educators around the world to kind of figure that out together. And one kind of interesting thing about uh, COVID is it has impacted the entire world. So everybody is kind of trying to figure out their own solutions to that. Um, but you be in community. You can, if you want, do this as a team. We found that people who join with other colleagues from their context. Um, really, it accelerates the, the work. So that's an option. Um, and then honestly, just we've heard from a lot of people, you know, in the last year and a half, we've been doing the CAM modules, just helping to stay proactively focused. Like, well, I really want to focus on equity. I really want to focus on learning. I really, I really want to focus on my own learning and growth in a time that's really high distraction. And it's just encouraging you to be reactive, right? So how do you, how do you invest deeply in your own learning? So that's some of what we would offer. All right, let's get to the hearing from everybody else. There's, we'll do a quick just nuts and bolts. It's primarily asynchronous. There are a couple of optional synchronous webinars, but you actually don't have to go to those. They're recorded. So we tried, we tried to build these so they could flex into your lives well. You get guidance and support from online learning facilitators. Barbara will tell you more about that in a moment. Um, and there's a there's a mixed rhythm of let's offer you some new content. Um, and then you have time to apply it in your own context. So the idea is really like to give you some just in time things that you can try out in your context. And of course we have readings. We have these fabulous videos from faculty and students and teachers and leaders, what we call voices from the field, kind of talking about the ideas of the content. We have little mini lectures from me and other faculty. Um, and then you engage with your colleagues who are also have a lot of expertise in education you do discussions with them asynchronously. We have little quizzes. You can check your understanding. Lots and lots of practical frameworks and tools. 
And then you get feedback, sometimes from your peers, sometimes from your online learning facilitator, and you just get a ton of practice. I mean, I lead a lot of adult learning. And one thing I will say about Kale is I have seen much more movement on the ground in action from Kale than any other kind of adult learning I do. And I think it's because it's kind of woven through what you're doing in your daily life, as opposed to like, I mean, we have fabulous things where you come to Harvard campus or you, you know, we, we have fabulous other things and I, you know, I do a lot of other things too, but it's just not the same. Kale has this really interesting mix. So, um, but we'll hear more about that from the, from everybody else. All right, let me turn it over now. So you can hear, as I said, from the people who actually have experienced the learning and in Barbara's case, who have learned, have led the learning. So Dr. Barbara Martirosian, I'm gonna turn it over to you so you can tell, tell our, our visitors a little bit about Kale. Yes, thank you. Welcome everybody. I'm Barbara Martirosian and I have been an online facilitator for a few years now with Driving Change, Developing Myself and LEE. And uh, my role, as Liz said, is to really guide uh, the process, boots on the ground, if you will, of your, your learning, which is self-authoring really. Um, and I provide feedback and uh, hopefully a little support along the way. Um, I think that Kale is very valuable uh, to participants, particularly right now for a couple of different reasons. Um, one thing that the program does is provide a lot of opportunity for collaboration. And that's not just with me, that is for the other participants in your pods, your pod mates. Um, and I have found people really appreciate the ability to, to say, oh, wow, even though I have a very different context, we're having a universal experience here with this issue. Um, I think peers or podmates provide a lot of uh, validation and maybe inspiration on different ways to approach leadership challenges. Um, I think another thing that's really helpful um, being a Cal participant uh, and graduate is that you can also name some of the challenges, right? A lot of people have said they have these ideas kind of swirling around in their mind and then, you know, discussing uh, ego pinches and so forth really crystallizes uh, the challenges that they are perhaps dealing with. Uh, in addition, though, the course most importantly provides you with tools, right? Tools to lead. Uh, these tools, I think, are transferable to many different situations. So uh, some of my favorite tools and tools that uh, participants have shared with me have been of uh, distinct value, have been uh, the Courageous Conversations Compass, uh, which you might utilize now. Um, as a nation, we're having uh, you know, a lot of discussions about race and that might apply to um, you know, the LEE course or developing myself course in particular, uh, deep listening skills, uh, the ladder of inference. And some of this sounds um, you know, like, oh, well, of course I'm a good listener. I, uh, I think I have this skill, but so many people then once they get in the practice and really uh, reflective mode that these courses require, um, realize that this is an opportunity to further develop, further hone their skills, and uh, that these things become part of their repertoire the more they practice. And I think that it's also very beneficial for participants to to say, okay, I've incorporated these skills uh, in my personal life as well. And they found uh, the tools that are embedded in the Kale modules as, as very empowering. Um, and I could give you lots of, lots of anecdotes. Um, you know, one thing though that sticks out in, in my mind as a result of a recent course is a participant who was struggling with a parent group and the parent group uh, was concerned about learning loss during the pandemic. And uh, this person really had to, um, you know, kind of slow down, do some deep listening to in part validate the feelings of 
the parents to um, restore some trust between the school system and the community and then be able to move forward with uh, with some solutions. And one thing I love about the course that I think is very helpful for participants is that, you know, whatever your projects are, you get the opportunity to, to tailor make them to whatever leadership challenges you are experiencing. So it's not just theory, it's very useful, very practical, very applicable skills that again are transferable to a lot of uh, different. Sorry about that. I also recently had uh, an international student who actually was um, astounded even that she had the opportunity to determine her, her own project as opposed to me telling her what she should do it on. So I think that is also transformative to realize you, know, you have these, these skills and these qualities to continue your adult development uh, and to, to really make this course valuable and, and, uh, and relevant to your own context. So I do think um, you know, the increased collaboration, the crystallization of issues, the opportunity to reach out to others across the world uh, and to deploy some of these tools is really, these are really the things that jump out uh, to me as being the most uh, valuable and relevant. There are many other things, but I'm kind of just grouping the, uh, the skills in, in some general uh, silos, I guess, right now so that, um, so that I could talk about them, but they are definitely uh, applicable to many situations. And as a matter of fact, um, I would say one of the reasons I love being an OLF is because sometimes we forget, right? That's human nature. Sometimes we forget to stay low on that ladder of inference. And when I, when I go through these courses, it's a great reminder for me, even as a, a veteran leader and an educator to be, to keep, practicing that mindfulness and keep practicing these skills with intentionality. Um, so I'm seeing a few, few questions come up here. Um, one is how does this program support those who have already earned a graduate degree in educational leadership? Um, again, I think the, the fact that it's not just theory, that it's applicable to your context, to your practice right now is extremely valuable. Uh, and the second part of your question about federal aid, I'm gonna, I'm gonna defer that to somebody else because I'm not sure about that one. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any other particular questions. Um, I see a few things. Coming in in the chat one, um, Eunice, it looks like is for you. Well, that is an awesome segue. We only have <laughs> what, eight minutes left in this session. Barbara, thank you so much. I wanna make sure we hear from Eunice and Raji and just give people that little FAQ. Awesome, thank you, Barbara. And Very good. Um, appreciate you so much for being here and for being all up. Dr. Eunice Humphrey, delighted to have you here. And I'm not gonna go into all your background there. I'm just gonna say, let me turn it over to you and you tell people about Kale, thank you. Great, so um, I actually have an update. So I'm actually a principal now. I'm a principal at uh, Yaz. And so I'll, I'll be honest with you all, um, a lot of it is and do uh, part to the Cal program. And so um, from preparing you to look at things within, um, and, and knowing your implicit biases to being able to talk to the superintendents and the CEOs and, and anybody who's able to listen um, to also just having courageous conversations, right? And so really, it, it, I think that, you know, what Barbara said is so true that everything that I learned, I was able to put into practice. And so, and that's what I wanted. I wanted a program that really allowed me to do that. And I looked, I'll be honest with everyone, I'm a researcher at heart. So I looked at a lot of different programs and this was the one that really spoke my language and really looked at, I really looked to see like, what is it that they were offering? And so from 
learning what some of the, the areas that I needed to improve in to then also knowing the areas that I was doing really well in. And then looking at, you look at the student and what the students need, but then you also look at what does your staff need? What do the adult learners need? And so I would say the Cal program um, is, is, I still use the tools now. And so I'm using them with a lot of my staff. I'm using them, um, especially with pre-service training and so just also just now whatever tools that I have, I make sure that they also have those tools. And so um, whatever questions I can answer, if there's any specific questions, please let me know. But it definitely helped and it definitely helped open this door that I'm in and this seat that I'm in right now. Love that. Congratulations too. And what a year to be a principal. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Not, a, not an easy time. Um, all right. Let's hear from Raji Naveen. Um, and you can see a little bit about her background from here. And Raji, I'll turn it over to you to talk about Kale. Thank you so much, Liz. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of those here. Uh, Barbara, thank you so much for sharing that learning loss experience. It still brings um, a lump in my throat when I think about how I went through that experience. So thank you so much for sharing that. One of the most biggest uh, learning experience for me from the Kale module. Um, Personally, I have to say that uh, uh, Kale was an exhilarating experience, perhaps one of the best courses uh, I have attended that is both impactful and game changing. Uh, to add on to that, a number of my colleagues too did kill, um, uh, all in groups of twos and threes. And we did have a lot of fun, learned new skills, contextualized learning to make them, uh, you know, sort of come back into our daily practice. So uh, just before the pandemic, I had co-founded a company that was creating a new category in education, like you talked about, Dr. Liz, um, and it was entirely peer reviewed through the Kale course that I did. So extremely impactful. The impact of the course can be assessed in how well this program was received by parents and children. Um, sort of moving towards practice and then going on to professional life in terms of my experience, um, the modules in Kale actually encourages teachers and facilitators to contextualize and peer review their ideas ever so beautifully that when we are actually done, we have really practiced our ideas and we continue to use them well into our different contexts. Uh, modules also give weightage to how we enable our peers and uh, in the pod that we are in. And that helps us to take support from each other in a sort of safe space and also helps us in enabling our teams after the course, uh, you know, on how to give feedback, how to receive feedback and how to enable others. Um, the team of us that went through the Kale modules have all developed invaluable leadership skills, uh, knowledge about equity, deep listening, and we actually feel a lot more empowered in our uh, professions now. So, uh, uh, you know, we are able to approach problems in our workplace a lot more objectively, analyze learning at multiple layers of the system, and just develop a strategy that is realistic and hence well organized and more uh, implementable. Um, as we speak uh, uh, this evening, uh, Barbara, you will also be very happy. Two of the learners who did the Developing Myself module, uh, they conducted a series of trainings for the other 17 thought leaders in our organization on the importance of how uh, listening skills, how listening skills is important for, learn, uh, for leaders. And both the participants and the trainers, they came away not just with an understanding of deep listening, but they started using appropriate vocabulary. And when we all sort of use that same terminology and vocabulary, you almost sort of resonate you start resonating and I think this is so important during these uh, you know unprecedented times uh, when mental well-being is of uh, you know it's just paramount so um, I would also like to say that uh, the circle of trust touch tones is a part of the offer letter when we welcome facilitators into our ecosystem so it has sort of you know become a part of our uh, uh, facilitator onboarding process and our learners to use that process, uh, use that framework. So it's not just for the, you know, facilitators in the group, but it's something that our older learners as well uh, use it. 
so in summary i think um, the biggest power of the kale course for all of the people over here is that it's it has extremely simple usable tools and frameworks that you can directly go back and take it into your work be it a root cause analysis tool ladder of inference um uh, you know or the meeting wise template that has become an integral part of our meetings in we don't have meetings without the meeting wise template or else we say it's a waste of money and that's the language that we try to uphold when trying to you know use these tools and uh, frameworks now on a lighter note during the covid crisis uh, and i think dr liz you referred to this earlier too we actually incorporated the harvard style of asynchronous learning lesson plan in our classroom knowing that harvard has been at it for so many years we uh, and we were actually doing online learning for the first time um, we actually uh, realized that we could learn from the best and uh, incorporate these ideas um, uh, in our classroom Uh, if it's okay i would just like to quickly share uh, one of the tools uh, uh, that i had used to solve again um, uh, you know a problem in our uh, uh, practice and uh, i'm just going to share that quickly um, may i continue sharing which means uh, the current screen share will be off is that okay yep yeah if you start sharing your screen thank you dilip yes okay um so uh, this is um, the root cause analysis tool uh, if you can see it uh, on your screen and this is just one of the examples of uh, uh, you know how um, uh, the tools can actually help you and walk the journey with you as you are trying to uh, you know trying to really solve problems and uh, uh, very briefly we were trying to say that while we were a school uh that is uh, you know extremely high on freedom and we talk about it but the huge concern was that learners are unable to handle freedom with responsibility and i would say that uh, you know this was one of the tools that really helped us understand what freedom is what responsibility is what do we mean by uh, you know how students are not able to deal with it so um uh, i just uh, i just think that the kale module Uh, is most effective because it becomes a way of life for you as a leader uh, in an educational context and uh, just uh, you know really delighted to have been a part of this experience and it continues thank you raji thank you unis thank you barbara all right well hopefully the combination of things in the q and a trying to answer the specific questions you're interested in, and then hearing from three people deeply involved as learners as as facilitators um gives you a picture of why it might be something that could help you in your practice in your own leadership development help you in any step places you're having like what Raji was just talking about and also um as you just build your own leadership skill set over time um so Dylan I'll turn it back to you to wrap us up and give us a few of the pragmatics great thanks so much Liz um So uh we really hope um this was a helpful session for you all today um and that you um have learned a lot and we see some questions that are still coming through so we'll keep the session open for a few more minutes to make sure those get answered um but thanks so much to you Liz and Barbara Yunus and Raji for for being our panelists today really appreciate it um And so hey, Dylan, what's see- the updated deadline? I just noticed we we uh we have the we have the one from the spring. What's the one for this fall if people want to people do want to sign up? Ah, that is Friday, August 27th. We had it in earlier in the slides but didn't update it for this one. My apologies. Um yes, it's Friday, August 27th. Um for the September term. Um and uh for more information you'll see um that link there and I'll share the slides again in the chat momentarily so you can have access to them and access to these links um and of course feel free to always um reach out to contact us if you have any additional questions that weren't answered today um our email address and phone number are there um thanks again so much everyone and again we'll we'll stay open for a few more moments just to answer those remaining questions um so take care and have a good rest of your day or evening or night depending on where you are and take care everyone
Thanks for joining us today. Have a wonderful, learningful school year, no matter what else is happening. <laughs> We're sending you the very best.